He had an example, which I think it's worth mentioning. <clears throat> it's a very good one, yeah. about a piece of wax. He said, if you take a piece of wax, it has a certain size and shape in your yeah. hand, a certain color, smell, texture, feel, temperature, and so on. And it seems to us to be the combination of those properties. If you put the same piece of wax in front of a fire, it immediately melts. And then all those things change. change yes. Different color, different smell, yeah. different temperature, different everything. Mm. And yet we want to say it's the same wax. Now, what about it? What is there about it that's the same? Answer: I suppose that there's a continuous history of space occupancy. Yes, it, there is, as you know, there is a great uh, one of the disputed things in uh, expounding Descartes is what exactly he thought the wax argument proved, and how much he thought it proved just by itself. But he certainly did use that example to illustrate, if not actually to prove. Uh, what he thought was the fundamental idea, that as it were, space occupancy, just being a piece of space. Yes. And it's rather important to be curious, he did actually not think, he really did think a piece of space. He didn't think it was just a thing in space because he didn't believe in a vacuum. He really yeah. did think that the whole world was one extended item and that separate item, the things in it, as we say, tables or whatever, really are local pieces of this in certain states of motion. Now, this is a foundation for the mathematical physics of the 17th century. In its own terms, didn't come off. I mean, eventually, it was going to be replaced by the classical physics and dynamics yeah. of Newton, which had a different conception of a mathematical world. But it did a tremendous amount to establish the notion of a physical world which is fundamentally of a mathematical character and permits mathematical physics to be done. Because of course, one of the most important and striking facts about the scientific revolution starting in the period we're discussing in Descartes' lifetime and through his work is that the, the first of the great sciences, as it were, to get going was in fact mathematical physics. Chemistry, the, the, as well, the things that deal with sorts of things in their much more uh, that kind of detail is of course much more a product of the 18th and 19th century and not, yeah. not of the 17th century. But wouldn't it be fair to say that Descartes in his time did more to launch the possibility of science and to, as it were, sell science to the educated public than anyone else. Yes, I should have thought that was probably true. I mean, the figure who was all, also enormously favor, famous and who's, as a matter of fact, whose actual physics is nearer to classical physics as it came out in the end is actually Galileo rather than Descartes. But of course, Galileo was more notorious, perhaps, than respectable because he was tried and condemned by the Inquisition and so on. Uh, yes, I mean, Descartes' intellectual influence in this respect was simply enormous, even though the details of his physics were eventually to be in good part repudiated. Yes. Now, up to this point in the argument, what Descartes has shown, Descartes hasn't, as it were, provided us with any physics. No. What he's shown is yes. that a mathematically based physics is possible, is possible yes. and is applicable right. to the real world. Yes. Can you expand on that distinction a little? Yes, absolutely. He, what he hopes to have shown by the manoeuvres we've been through, we've followed so far, yeah. is that, as it were, the world is so constructed that man is capable of knowing about it. I mean, in, in that sense, man and the world are made for each other by God. There is still a teleological thing at the end in God, even though, of course, man, in his essence, is not actually part of nature because man is this immaterial intellectual substance which isn't part of the natural yeah. thing. Man is not part of nature in that sense, but he is, as it were, his intellect is quite well adjusted to it. And that means we can conduct a mathematical physics above all. Now, Descartes thought that some of the fundamental principles of physics could themselves be known by what we would call philosophical reflection. He thought in particular we could know by such reflection that every physics had to have a conservation law. There had to be something that was conserved. We talk about the conservation of energy, the conservation of force, and so on. Uh, Descartes... The indestructibility of matter, yes, as it used to be. as it used to be yes. thought. Of course, yes. now we know the equivalence of matter and energy so yes, uh, exactly. uh, through mm. atomic reactions and so mm. on. Mm. Now, Descartes actually picked on the quantity that was conserved, something which wasn't what was conserved, and indeed, in terms of classical physics later, is not even well defined. But the idea was there, and that was a priori. It was to be known by reflection. Further details of the laws of physics, he thought, required investigation. And in particular, how the world was actually laid out, yes. how different patterns of motion were to be found in it, he thought was a matter for experimental inquiry. Yes. Now, this is quite important because people, Descartes is rightly said to be a rationalist philosopher. That is, that he thinks that fundamental properties of the world and of the mind and so on 
can be discovered by reflection, mm. by a kind of philosophical reflection. And he does not think that everything is just derived from experience or experimental things. Mm. It's sometimes supposed that he was such a strong rationalist that he thought that the whole of science was to be deduced by purely kind of mathematical or logical reasoning from metaphysics. That if I sat and thought hard enough about the cogito and God and matter and all that, I'd arrive with, that, with the whole of science. He thought no such thing. In fact, he's absolutely consistent always in saying that experiments are necessary to distinguish between some ways of explaining nature and others. You can build different models. This is very modern, very modern aspect of his thought. Mm -hmm. You can build or construct different intellectual models of the world within his laws. Experiment is needed to discover which are truly there. Yes. And is experiment seen by him as designed to test the answers or to give us the material for the premises to our argument? It's designed uh, for a number of different things, actually, but really the following, that if you take the fundamental laws of nature, the principles on which matter moves, there are a lot of different mechanisms you could imagine which would produce superficially the same effect. You then make differential experiments. You then arrange a setup in which one thing will happen if one model is what's really there, and it won't if another is. And so you select between models. And that really is a quite a good description of quite a lot of what physicists do. Well, fact. it's the modern notion of the crucial or decisive yes. experiment. Yes, and he was very keen on that. One of yes. the things that Descartes was admirable about was that it was simply no good blundering around the world, trying out experiments to see what you could find out. No. You had to ask the right question. And that's, again, this thing where you're saying, Paul, that God is on your side if you do your bit. Yes. God will not allow you to be systematically deceived mm. if you don't systematically deceive yourself. Mm. So yeah. what you've got to do is to think of the right questions to... Yeah ask, and then God will assist nature in yeah. giving you the answer. I think it's worth making the point at this stage in the discussion yeah. that although uh, God is an absolutely indispensable element to Descartes in the course of arriving at his method, once you've got the method, you don't have to be That's any right. sort of believer in That's God right. to use it, no, do that, you? That is an exceedingly important point, that Descartes wanted to free the process of science from theological constraints or foundations, or as one might say, free it from theological foundations and hence from theological interference. Yeah. But, of course, he was extremely keen to say this does not mean that we've produced a godless world. Mm -hmm. We've produced a world which is, in fact, made by God and where our knowledge of it is guaranteed by God. But where you have to appeal by God to God in your intellectual life mm -hmm. is not in, as you rightly say, in conducting science, but in proving to skeptics that it can be conducted. And Descartes very sensibly thought, you shouldn't spend a lot of time in proving to skeptics that it can be conducted. You only need to do it once. He yeah. thought he'd done it. Yeah. Now let's all get on with it, yeah. was his view. 